Good morning. Welcome to Victorious Faith. I'm Cherry Campbell. We are setting the law of spiritual authority, and we're talking about the jurisdiction of our authority, where we do have authority and where we do not. And then the last couple days, I've been talking to you about circles of authority, circles of authority, and our authority, that is our spiritual authority, can be described in comparison to concentric circles, that is circles that enlarge outwardly from a common center point or central circle. So there's a central circle and then outside of that is a larger circle. Outside of that is a larger circle. Outside of that is a larger and then a larger and then a larger. Well, that is a picture of your spiritual authority. The central circle is you, yourself. You have 100% authority over yourself. And what you say about you will be law in your life more than what anybody else says about you, including God and God's word. Let me say that again. What you say about you is final authority and has being more authority than what anybody else says about you, others, or even including God, because you, what you say is law in your own life. You are the law over your own life. And what you say becomes the law over your own life. And so yesterday I was talking a little bit about when you even ask someone else to pray for you, you don't need to ask a hundred people to pray for you because you have a hundred percent authority over you. Now you can ask someone else who has faith. Maybe they are even, you think they have a greater faith than you have. You can ask them to pray for you as long as you are in agreement with what they say and you don't come out of agreement and say something different to nullify what they say. Because for example, if they pray for your healing and you say, father, or they say, father, I thank you that your anointing is released right now into this person and your healing power heals them right now. In Jesus name, we believe we receive it. Amen. Now you can say amen, but you must stay in agreement in order for that prayer to hold effectiveness. Because if you walk away and talk about, I'm sick, I didn't get healed, I guess I'm not healed, then your words will nullify and void that prayer of faith because what you say will be the law over your life, not what they say. And that includes what God says about you. If God, God's word, you need to know what God's word says about you. We talked last year about who we are in Christ and things that the Bible says that we are and that we have. And so if, since God's word says you are the righteousness of God in Christ, if you say you are not, if you say you're unworthy and you're no good and unrighteous, then what you say will be more effective than God, what God said. If you say you're not saved, then you're not saved. If God since God's word says by his stripes, you were healed, but you say you're not healed. Then what you say will go your what your, your words will be the law. If since God's word says you are blessed and you are the head and not the tail above and not beneath. But if you say, I'm not blessed, things go wrong for me. I'm always beneath. I'm always under the barrel. Then what you say is going to go for you. Not what God said. What you said goes, what you said is law in your life. Your words will control and rule your life. Your words will control and rule your life. And we'll talk about that in future broadcasts, but your words will rule your life even more than God's word. If you do not agree with God's word for God's word to rule, then you have to say what God said. You have to believe what God said, say what God said, and agree with what God said for what God said for God's word to be effective and powerful and ruling in your life. Amen. 
And so then we said the second level of authority is the second circle outside of the central circle. And remember, with each circle outward, you have less authority, not more, less. So the second circle outward is your immediate family. That is your spouse and children. And especially with your children, when they are children, not after they are adults, but when they are children, you have great spiritual authority where you can pray over them. You can declare God's blessing on them. You can rebuke sickness and disease off of them and out of their body. You can pray for their healing. You can pray for um, different things in their life. According to God's word, again, it's always in agreement with God's word. You do not say, God, make my son be this or make my son be that. No, not in regard to their life calling and so forth, but in the areas where we have authority over ourselves. Let me say it like that. The authority where we have over ourselves, animals, the earth and the elements of the earth, sickness, disease, and the curse of sin and death, demons, you have great authority to rebuke those things that would affect your children, sickness, disease, the curse, the devil, any attack of the devil. And there also with your spouse, you can pray for the attacks of the devil to be broken, whether they are mental, emotional, physical attacks against your spouse, whether they are attacks at work or anywhere else, you know, on the job, coworkers or supervisors attacking them, you can pray the prayer of faith and give the command of authority in faith to break that attack in Jesus name. I command that attack to be broken against my husband, my wife, I command this attack to be broken. I command si Satan to be silent in Jesus name and the accusers to be silent in Jesus name. You know, you need to go to the word of God and talk and seek and search what the Bible says. I even have scriptures on my website. If you need to go to the website at www.victoriousfaith, V-I-C-T-O-R-I-O-U-S, faith, F-A-I-T-H dot C-O, like Colorado, C-O. And then on my website, for one thing, there are the radio broadcast archives, and you can listen to all these broadcasts on the website. They're available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And then also there is on the website a page called help from God's word. And those are scripture lists and scripture confessions for you to pray over yourself, your family, your loved ones, your friends. And as you pray the word of God, that is the greatest way to have power and effectiveness in prayer in anyone's life. And so there is a page there called court cases or accusations. And so if you are under attack, if your spouse is under attack, if your children are under attack from other people, there's accusations, false charges, resistance, persecution, then you can go to those scriptures that I have listed there and where God is your defender, God is your defense and your enemies are silenced in Jesus name. And you exercise your authority by commanding the evil spirits that are behind it to be silent. And remember that the Bible says that we fight not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and the rulers of the darkness of this world. And you have to remember your enemy is not the person that is speaking against you. The enemy is the devil through the person. Your enemy is not a person. Your enemy is not your supervisor or your coworker. Your enemy is the devil who is working through people. So what your effectiveness will be in taking authority in the name of Jesus over the devil and stopping that attack through the person, because if the devil doesn't use that person anymore, then that attack will break. So you have greater authority 
over your spouse and your children. And this is authority in the spirit realm, not in the flesh. It is not a controlling authority. You do not have authority to control your spouse or control your children. No, no, no. It is only in the spirit, according to God's word, in the areas that we have already said are your legal jurisdiction. So the areas that are your legal jurisdiction in your life to rule over, you can rule over those things in their life. As well, sickness, disease, the curse, demons and demonic attacks. You can rule over those things in their life as well in in the name of Jesus. And then outward from your spouse and children, your immediate family, the next circle of authority is your extended family and your neighborhood or community. So your extended family being your cousins, your aunts and uncles and et cetera, and then your neighborhood, your neighbors and what goes on in your neighborhood. You can take authority over drug abuse in your neighborhood, over the devil working in your neighborhood, theft in your neighborhood and your community, your close community. And then the next circle outward from your neighborhood and community is your city. Your city is the next circle outward. And then the next circle out is your state. And the next circle out is your nation. And the next circle out is the world, the whole wide world. Now, as I've said before, on each outward level, each outward circle, each extended level of authority, we alone carry or have less authority. We have decreasing authority, which with each level outward. In other words, we have less authority over our immediate family than we have over ourselves. We have less authority over our extended family than our immediate family. We have less authority over the city than we have our neighborhood. We have less authority over the state than we have over our city. We have less authority over the nation than we have over our state. And we have less authority over the whole wide world than we have over our nation. And now listen carefully. Listen. You got your ears open? Listen to this. On each outward or extended level of authority, we must have more people in agreement with us or us with them to make our prayers impacting, fruitful, powerful, and effective. Let me say that again. With each outward or extended level of authority, We must have more people in agreement. And I've been talking about the power of agreement where one can put a thousand to flight, two can put 10,000 to flight, the Bible says. And so in our neighborhood, we will have more effectiveness and power in prayer if we will get some neighbors to pray in agreement. And if you and your one or two or three neighbors will pray in agreement, then you will have great authority in your neighborhood. And then in your city, if you can get people from different neighborhoods in your city, different neighborhoods, different communities of your city to come together in prayer and have a city prayer where there are representatives of the different parts of the city. Then you pray together. Then your corporate prayers in agreement with each other in faith will have power and effectiveness to change your city or to do God's will that you're praying for your city. So you need more people in your city to come together. And of course, that will depend on how big your city is. If you have a small city, 
then it will take fewer people. If you have a big city, it will take more people. And it's good to get people representing different neighborhoods to pray together in corporate prayer in agreement for you to see change in your city. And then the same is true with your state. It is not enough for people of only one city to pray for their state. It will not be enough spiritual authority to change the state. But if you get people from most all, at least many of a majority of the cities and towns of your state, get representatives, people in prayer from different cities and towns in your state to pray together in corporate prayer, in agreement in prayer, then having these representatives from the different cities, the different towns, the different counties, the different districts of your state, you all come together in agreement in corporate prayer, then you will have effectiveness to change your state or to do God's will in your state. And then the same is true on the national level. If you, it is not enough for people of one state to pray for the nation or even two states or three states or five or 10. You need nearly all the states to be representative, to be represented in corporate prayer. And that would be not just one person from each state, but several people representing each state, perhaps different counties of the state, representing each state, several people from each state come together, representing the different counties in their state, and then nearly all the states come together with representatives, plural, of their state, and praying together in faith, in corporate prayer, to change the nation. To change the nation. You see, you'll need greater agreement in prayer, in with other people in prayer, for you to change your nation. One person cannot change the nation alone. Two people cannot change the nation alone. Three people, five, ten, fifteen, 20 people cannot even change the nation alone. But having several people representing the different states coming together, having hundreds of people or even thousands, it would probably, depending again on the population of the country, but thousands of people, Christians, believers, praying together in faith, in corporate prayer, can change their nation. To, can change the nation. And then on a worldwide scale, you're going to have to have the nations represented in corporate prayer with hundreds of people, perhaps at least a proportionate representation of each nation to come together in corporate prayer for the, for the whole wide world to be changed. So understand that with each outward level of authority, you need more agreement in prayer. Now, how do you pray in agreement? How do you pray in using the corporate prayer and the power of agreement? Let me give you the scriptures that I've been referring to you and um, you can see it for yourself. First of all, Matthew chapter 18 Verses 19 and 20. Matthew 18, verses 19 and 20. And Jesus said, Again, I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything you ask for, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three come together in my name, there am I with them, or there am I in the midst of them. So two or three coming together. And of course, as we've been explaining, each level of authority, you will, you must have more people. Each outward extended level, you must have more people. So then for your city, if there's thousands of people, you'll need a hundred. Depends on how many. If there's in your state, 
You may need hundreds of people to pray for your state. For your nation, you'll need thousands of people to pray in agreement to carry authority. Why? Because there are other people there in the city, in the state, in the nation that also have free will. They also have authority. And so their authority, if they want to rebel against God, then you'll have to have more agreement that your nation turns to God, makes godly laws and legislation than that can be effective in the face of all the sin that is there in the nation. And so how do you pray the prayer of faith and agreement, the prayer of agreement? First of all, you make the word of God the foundation of your prayer. Make the word of God the foundation of your prayer. That means find scriptures. Find scriptures that declare God's will for your nation, your state, your city. And then you together agree on those scriptures and believe them together. Number two, make the decision together that you believe in your hearts and you agree together that God's promises will come to pass. Number three, agree that you will not come out of agreement. You're not going to walk away from there and, and nullify that prayer of faith by saying the opposite, by speaking negative. You will not come out of agreement by speaking the negative. And then number four, believe that Jesus himself is in the midst of you, that God himself is agreeing with you. And I was telling you that uh, the Bible says one man can chase a thousand. That's in Deuteronomy 32, 30, Deuteronomy 32, 30. And it says one man can chase a thousand two put 10,000 to flight. One man chase a thousand two put 10,000 to flight. So notice it's not two putting 2,000, but it's two putting 10,000. So it's not additional authority and strength. It is exponential or multiplied. It is not additional. It is multiplied. One can put a thousand two put 10, not two putting two, but two putting 10,000 to flight. That is exponential or multiplied authority and power and strength in prayer. So one person's prayer is mighty. We read that in James five sixteen. The prayer of a righteous man, a righteous man is powerful and effective. But when you have someone else to agree with you, you can do 10 times more than what you can do by yourself. You can do 10 times more than what you can do by yourself. So I want you to see this is the power of agreement, the prayer of agreement with when you're talking about praying for others, you will have less authority over other people's lives than you have over your own. And you'll have less authority with each extended circle of influence where you have influence in your life, your community, your city, your state, your nation, and then your world, the whole world, I mean. And so with each extended level of authority, we must have more people coming into agreement in faith to impact your city, your state, your nation, and the world. And practice the prayer of agreement based on Matthew 18, verses 19 and 20, and also Deuteronomy 32, 30. And you make the word of God the foundation for your prayers, and the scripture promises are the basis of your prayers that you pray together in agreement. And then you believe and agree together and agree that you will not come out of agreement. And then your prayers are powerful and effective. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So that is how the circles of authority work. And that is your authority 
in other areas beyond your own life. Now, like I said, you have greatest authority over yourself, but you can ask for others to pray for you. And if you will agree with their prayers and you don't come out of agreement, then their prayers are powerful and effective for you. So I want to pray for you right now as we are getting uh, running out of time today and you come into agreement with me and you say, yes, I agree with that. I believe that in Jesus name and then you'll receive it. And I want to pray for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone listening to this radio broadcast. I pray for those who are under stress and I command that stress to be broken in Jesus name. Those who are under pressure, I command pressure to be broken in Jesus name. Those who are under attack from other people, people. I command those attacks, verbal attacks or job related attacks. I command those attacks be broken in Jesus name. Those who have sickness in their body, I command sickness to be gone. I rebuke it. I command it. Leave your body. Now I command your body to be free and healed in Jesus name. Those who are under financial burdens and attacks, I command finances to be released. I command a financial attack be broken. I command the blessing be released least and loosed and I command supernatural increase to come to you in Jesus name and the blessing to work in your life in Jesus name. I'm out of time so you agree with that and say amen and join with me again tomorrow. Remember God loves you. You are blessed and highly favored by the Lord.